Corporate Finance OneNote Practice Problem. In this presentation, we're going to work a practice problem in OneNote related to a cash break-even point, modifying our break-even point analysis for a cash break-even point. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with Corporate Finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you would like to follow along in OneNote, you're not required to do so, but if you have access to it and would like to, we are in the 517 cash break even point tab in the practice problems section. Closing this back out, we're going to have our information up top. We'll go through a couple different uh, scenarios of this and we'll read through the information. Then we'll have a smaller component of that information that we can use to work through the practice problem. So this is going to be a modification of our break-even point. Now we're thinking about a cash break-even point. So we're going to have the fixed costs are going to be the 730000 The percent of fixed costs that is depreciation is going to be 15%. So we're going to be considering those fixed costs and thinking about those items within the fixed costs that are not cash related. And the biggest item oftentimes within the fixed costs that are not cash related will be the depreciation. Remember what the depreciation is, is when we purchase large property plant and equipment, either for cash or financing at the point of purchase, we do not expense it at that time, but rather put it on the books as an asset. Then we're going to depreciate it over the useful life of that asset in the form of depreciation. Therefore, when we actually depreciate it, it doesn't re represent cash that is being outflowed at that point in time, but the allocation of the costs to the time period in which the large purchases, the investments, the property, plant, and equipment are being used. So then we're going to have the contribution margin per unit is going to be the 6.1. So remember, the contribution margin per unit is calculated as the sales price per unit minus the variable cost per unit that gives us the contribution margin per unit so then we're going to have a smaller component of our information here we're going to calculate our break even analysis we'll do it a bit more quickly now because we're given the contribution margin per unit in other words we're going to take the fixed costs the uh, 730,000 and then we're going to make an adjustment for it uh, for the depreciation. The depreciation is going to be 15% of the fixed costs. Therefore, we're simply going to take the, bringing up the calculator here, the 730,000 times 0.15. That's going to give us the 109,000. The fixed cost minus the depreciation portion of it is going to give us the cash fixed costs. So now we have the cash fixed costs on the on the right, the 200 and the 620,000. And then we're going to divide that by the contribution margin per unit. So this is a little bit of a shortcut for us. We've seen in the past, we actually calculated the contribution margin per unit, which is the unit price minus the variable cost. So that would give us the contribution margin per unit. So think of that 6.1 as the price minus the variable cost per unit. Then if we divide that into the 620,500, we're going to get our cash break even 620,500 divided by the 6.1. That's going to give us about 101,721. Now we can consider, well, what does that mean? Let's kind of prove this out then. If we plug this back into our uh, net profit or our contribution margin type of income statement, we're going to take our contribution margin, which is going to be our units times our contribution margin per unit. This is a little bit different once again because we're not taking sales minus uh, the, the uh, variable costs to get to the contribution margin, but rather we're jumping directly to the contribution margin using our contribution per unit, contribution margin per unit, times the units sold, which we're assuming to be our break-even point. So we're going to be multiplying the contribution margin per unit times the unit sold. That's going to give us our contribution margin, which would be the same point if we were to calculate the total sales minus the total contribution margin. I mean, uh, the total sales minus the total variable costs would give us to the total contribution margin. Then I'm going to subtract out the total fixed costs, the total fixed costs, including the depreciation, meaning that's our starting point before we took out the depreciation, which was not cash related. And that would, of course, result in a loss, a loss of the 109,500, that loss being equivalent to the depreciation. So to prove this, in other words, notice normally when we do a break even analysis and then we prove it, plugging it back into an income statement, then we would expect net income to be zero. In this case, it, net income would not be zero if we still take into consideration the whole uh, fixed costs, including the non-cash items, 
the net income would result in a loss, that loss being equal to then the non-cash items that we removed out of the calculation being related to, in this case, um, the depreciation. So you can imagine if we were to think about this, why would we do this? You might say, okay, well, look, I want to calculate my break-even point in terms of the normal break-even point. You might say, okay, well, if I had 730000 uh, before I, I break out the depreciation divided by the 6.1, then I would have to produce 119672 But what if in a, in a worst-case scenario, I couldn't produce that many? How many units would we need to produce just to cover the actual cash payments that we need to make? Because 109500 uh, although it's a fixed cost that we're going to allocate to the income statement, isn't cash that's actually going out the door in terms of cash flow. The cash flow is going to be the 620500 And if I use the 620500 that means I only have to, cal I only have to sell 101721 in order to be okay, in order to move forward, even though that results in a loss. But the loss that's being resulted here is not due to cash flow. It's due to the fact that we have this depreciation expense, a non-cash flow item that's being allocated out to it. Okay, so if we do that a couple more times, we'll just do the same kind of thing just to practice this break even in cash flows. Same kind of scenario. We got the fixed costs, the percentage of fixed costs that is depreciation, and then the contribution margin per unit being equal to the, the sales price per unit minus the variable cost per unit. So we got the cash fixed cost then is going to be the, to the uh, total fixed costs minus the depreciation component. And that often is the largest. It might not be the only kind of cash a non-cash item but it's usually the largest one right the depreciation is going to be a large non-cash item so we're going to take the 2300 uh, 2 million 300 thousand times the 0.12 that means the depreciation that we're going to remove that's going to be non-cash related says that now we have fixed costs that are cash related of the 2 million 24. then we're going to take the contribution margin per unit which is going to be calculated or would be calculated in the same way we saw in the past, which would be the unit sales price minus the unit variable cost. And we're going to be taking then this 2024000 divided by the 68. That's going to give us our uh, contribution margin in cash, or I'm sorry, a break even point in cash 29765. If we were to prove that again, we're going to say net income or contribution margin income statement. We're going to calculate the contribution margin directly by just taking the units sold, which we're now we're estimating at the 29,765, multiplying it times the contribution margin per unit, the 68, to give us the 2,024,000, jumping right to the contribution margin instead of us first calculating the sales, total sales, minus the total variable costs. Two ways to get to the same point. So now we're at the contribution margin. Then we're going to subtract out the fixed costs. I'm going to subtract out total fixed costs, which includes both the cash and non-cash items, resulting in a loss. And that loss is going to be then equivalent to the uh, amount of the depreciation that we have. So once again, we would expect then there to be a loss if we're calculating the break even in cash, the break, the loss being equivalent to those, those uh, cash items in this case, the depreciation and again you could think of the thought process here you're going to say okay well you know how many units do i have to produce in order to cover the fixed costs well the fixed costs are 200 2 million 300 thousand divided by the 68 contribution margin we'd have to produce 33 823 but what if you know uh what's the minimum i got to produce just to clear the the cash flow well, then we're going to subtract out. I can subtract out the depreciation. We're still okay. We'll be running at a loss due to the accrual component, the accrual expense, the non-cash expense of depreciation. But we could still pay the cash flow if we were to make only the 29,765 units. Let's do it one more time. This time we got the fixed cost of the 6 million. Percentage of fixed cost that is depreciation, 18%. Contribution margin now 17. Contribution margin once again being sales price per unit minus the variable cost per unit. So we got the cash fixed cost is going to be the 6 million. And then we're going to subtract out the depreciation. The depreciation now calculated as the, uh, the 6 million 
no, 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 no. That's too many zeros times the 0.18. So that means we're going to say of the 6 million, we have cash of only 6 million minus the 1 million 80. And so our cash fixed costs are the 4 million 920. Then if we divide our contribution margin into that contribution margin being the unit sales price minus the unit variable cost, giving us our unit contribution margin or contribution margin per unit, that means that we're going to have the 4920000 divided by 17, which gives us the 289412 about. And let's just check it out. Let's double check it in our contribution margin income statement, which we're going to take calculate the contribution margin directly by taking that number of units times the contribution margin per unit to give us the contribution margin of the 4920 which could also be calculated if we knew the sales price and the variable cost by calculating first total sales minus total variable cost, which would also get us to the total contribution margin of the 4920 Then we're going to compare that to the fixed costs, giving us a loss, that loss being $1,080,000. Um, and that is going to be equal to the depreciation up top. So once again, we would expect there to be a loss if we're calculating this based on the cash break-even point, the loss being equivalent to those expenses, in this case depreciation, that are not cash-related, not actual cash flows. And like I say, you could think about this thought process. You can say, all right, well, let's calculate our normal break-even, which would be the 6 million divided by the 17, and we'd get to the uh, 352 941 but it's been a crisis year what if you know how much do we have to sell just to basically pay the bills because we're not paying the bills for the depreciation that's an allocation of the cost that had happened sometime in the past if we just need to to pay the bills here we got then the 4920000 divided by the 17 and that's what we need to do to clear the fixed costs that are actually cash flows that are going to go out the door. It will result in a loss for us on the income statement, but it'll allow us to cover the cash flow.